Hi, everybody. Brian Pate from the Pate Realty Group in Wake Forest, North Carolina, located just outside of Raleigh. I want to welcome you to the 2020 um, real estate wrap up. Uh, the idea here is just to get you some total numbers. Uh, I know we've got a lot of real estate agents that follow along here, and I greatly appreciate that. So let's get right to the numbers and see what the 2020 year brought us. Remember, we went into lockdown approximately March 13th. Um, and so that's when the coronavirus lockdown began with COVID-19, coronavirus, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and we really had some uncertainty with what was going on with the real estate market at that point. A little worried about what, what the future might bring. Would it bring it to a halt? Would it cause another recession in the real estate business, et cetera? Uh, and obviously, we've had our challenges across the economy. But overall, here in the triangle, at least, the real estate market has been very strong. Um, so our, our total stats for 2020, um, the, and we're going to first start by just taking all houses in a lump. So this includes new construction, resale listings, uh, uh, condos, townhouses, mobile homes that are on a slab. It includes everything that was sold. There were a total of 45,794 sold homes that closed between January 1st and December 31st of 2020. The interesting piece is because of the low inventory and, and the, the lack of inventory that we had throughout the marketplace, the average days on the market for those sold properties was only 19 days with the median days at three. So if you listed your house on a Friday for these 45,794 sold homes, if you listed your house on Friday, you probably sold it by Monday morning. So that's good for sellers. The bad side of that is that it drove uh, buyers into bidding wars in many cases and caused a lot of havoc on the buy side. Uh, lots of buyers that are minimally qualified having trouble competing as offers went above the list price. Realtors then challenged it uh, or, or uh, went back to the drawing board with that and started showing their clients properties that were $10,000, $15,000 less than the maximum that the client could, have, could afford so that they would have room to compete. So again, total sold over the year, 45,794 homes, average days on the market of 19 days, uh, uh, median days on the market of three. Now, the average sold price went up to $338,283. That's not the one that we really use to compare. The end of last year, we were at about $262,000 median, uh, and our median price this year was two ninety-five. dollars So values went up theoretically about thirty dollars to $32,000, depending on where you are. And then the incredible number in, in, a, in a market that just had everything against it this year, $15.49 billion worth of real estate sold in the Triangle MLS this year. That's $15.49 billion with a B, an absolutely incredible number. If we break that out and look at the new construction versus resale properties, uh, there are a total resale of 33,227 sold, making resale 72.5% of the total triangle market for real estate. So again, almost three quarters of the real estate market uh, last year was resale homes. Now, that's in contrast to where we are right now, where new construction is just a little over half of the, the available market on the triangle MLS. So um, Pete Berkner's asked, uh, are we going to have a housing bubble with home prices rising so quickly? Not right now, Peter, at least, because of the low inventory. We are at record low inventory. The low was 3,079 homes on the market two days ago. And that's compared, if you remember back in 2009, the highest point we received was 19,945. So if you look at that as a comparison, we're at one third of the uh, available, uh, or excuse me, one sixth of what, the, what, we were, what was available at the top of the market. Uh, or at the bottom of the market when we had the most inventory ever. Uh, in general, we should probably have three times the available homes on the market right now that we do have. So inventory is still driving that. And as long as inventory is low, prices are going to continue to go up. Eventually, at some point, the market will balance out 
And then it will be a matter of a combination of interest rates, how many new construction starts there are. Uh, you know, right now we just, we need more properties for people to buy. There just aren't enough out there. And the more challenging part is that builders are unable to build homes that are under $265,000 or so because the cost of land is so expensive. So in order to combat that, we're having to go outward and reach out into far regions that uh, we normally wouldn't have reached out. This is why you're seeing Creedmoor and Smithfield and Franklinton becoming much more popular, Lewisburg growing. If you, if you go to any of those areas, you're seeing massive amounts of new construction because that's the only place where what we would consider affordable housing could actually be built. The other option is to go up and, and build condominiums or to build townhomes that are actually attached. And people still want at least a little bit of land with their property, at least in my research. Now, what we are seeing is the average size of the house is beginning to go down. It's about 150 square feet smaller this year than it was last year with the new construction properties. So that's the other thing that we're looking at. So I don't think we're going to see a bubble uh, anytime soon. I think eventually there will be a market correction. I don't know that it'll be a bubble, but uh, eventually prices will flatten out, maybe go down 2 to 3%. But I certainly don't think we're going to see here in the triangle what we've seen in, in bigger markets like Miami and San Francisco and New York, where values will drop 10, 12, 15, 20% in some cases. So I don't think we're going to see that. So continuing to talk about the resale listings, uh, again, 33,227 total sold last year in 2020. Average days on the market of 26 days, median of six. Um, the average sold price, 321.7 in that ballpark and then the median sold price of $280,000. So last year we looked at the resale, uh, again, I told you about $262,000. This year, $280,000. So about an $18,000 increase on a $300,000 home if you own one. Uh, again, about $10.69 billion worth of resale homes sold last year. So what does that mean for us? Well, Right now in, in the marketplace, again, we're below 3,100, or we're right at 3,100 active listings. I think it was about 3,125 this morning. It had a significant jump over the last couple of days because people are putting their houses on the market. In the past, the what I called the spring market would begin to jump in the triangle on, in January. Um, you know, first or second week of January, we'd see a massive add-on of five to 600 listings, and then that would grow and we would add you know, seven or 800 listings a week for the next 10 to 12 weeks through the spring market. I think we're going to see a few people waiting on that because I think with, the, with number one, a larger number of people being uh, diagnosed with the coronavirus or COVID-19, combined with the fact that we've got a new strain that seems to be making its way to the U.S., combined with the fact that there are still a lot of people that are nervous about going into other people's homes and sellers that are nervous about having people come into their homes. we got a lot of baby boomers that want to move down to smaller properties. And those folks don't want just anybody coming through their houses at this point, so they're not putting them on, on the market for that reason. So I, I think that's going to have a true effect. I think it will probably be June or July before the market really booms, if you will. And I think spring market will likely be closer to the third quarter than to the second quarter like it normally is. Again, that's that's assuming that nothing changes. If, if things were to change, it could certainly change the market quickly. But it looks like it's going to take until May or so before the general public begins to receive their vaccinations. And until that happens, there are going to be some people that are nervous about having folks in their home. Once we get the, the enough people vac vaccinated, uh, I think you will see a larger number of, uh, a, a bigger number of activity going on, more listings on the market, people selling their current home that may be seven or eight years old and buying new construction. Two things have to happen for that. Number one, people have to be willing to let uh, others walk through their home to see the property. And number two, builders have to continue to come out of the ground with new construction. You know, that's the only way we're going to add living quarters here in, in the Triangle area is to add more properties. And we've still got 45 to 50 people a day moving to Wake County. So those are huge numbers, huge growth, and we're going to continue to see that. Uh, I hope that that helps everybody. I hope you've enjoyed the time here. 
Uh, I don't want to make this too long. I'm always uh, happy to answer any questions. And of course, don't forget if you're a realtor, please don't forget to register for my CE classes. We'll be adding to the schedule here over the next couple of weeks, and we should have a full schedule available to you by the end of January. So as always, thanks again for watching, and we'll look forward to seeing you soon.